Hello, Ocean, my friends. The Heinz Honey and Almond Cream Program. Vote for crazy! 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 Vote for crazy. Starring George Burns and Gracie Allen with Frank Parker, Ray Noble and his orchestra, and Truman Bradley speaking. Presenting our presidential candidate who just flew back from Washington, where she was the honored guest at the Women's National Press Club's annual dinner, Heinz Honey Gracie Allen. Very much. And now presenting her partner, who just got back from the opening of a meat market, George Burns. Uh, thank you, my friend, and you are my friend. Oh, he is not. It's your brother Willie. Oh, <laughs> I noticed that suit looks familiar. Say, Gracie, we're all dying to know what happened in Washington. Well, it's a long story, so I'll tell it. Good. Now, I met Mrs. Dewey, Mrs. Vandenberg, Mrs. Burton Wheeler, Mrs. Bennett Champ Clark, and I met, um, uh, oh, what's her name now? Oh, my nerves so well. Does she uh, uh, live in Washington? Yeah, in a big white house. Mrs. Roosevelt? Yes. Yeah, I thought so, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, George, you should have been at that dinner. What would I be doing there? Well, all the wives of the other candidates were there. <laughs> well, uh, I didn't have what to wear. Uh, oh. You mean you had to stay home and watch the children? Quiet. <laughs> Gracie, you spoke at this banquet in Washington. What happened? Yeah, tell us the details, Gracie. Well, I got on the plane at Burbank. Yes. Oh, and what a plane. The cutest pilot you ever saw in your life. Gracie, the banquet. Oh, I'm coming to that. Oh. He had blue eyes and brown shoes. Nice combination. Yeah, weren't we? Yes, yes. Say, uh, Gracie, it was pretty cloudy that day. How was the visibility? Oh, pretty fair. I was sitting on his lap, but he could see over my shoulder. <laughs> Gracie, the banquet. I'm coming to that. Mm. Say, George, if Gracie is elected, what are you going to do? You think you're kidding, huh? I'm beginning to worry, too. Well, don't worry. You can always write a column, and I can correct the spelling. Well, <laughs> thanks, kid. Oh, and George, what a thrill I got. There we were, flying 10,000 feet over the Grand Canyon, and the pilot let go of the controls and put both arms around me. Did he start falling? Oh, you said it, and I fell for him, too. <laughs> Gracie, did you ever get to Washington? Well, where do you think I made that speech? Speech? Yes. Yeah. What speech? At the banquet. Well, what did you say? Oh, coming to that. Oh, come to it. And we flew over Texas. Freddie the pilot, you know, he's the pilot. Yes, yeah, so I know. Well, yeah. he had a little trouble. Mm. He stuck his left hand out to make a left-hand turn and got it caught in the propeller. <laughs> did he ever stick his right hand out? Yeah, and Mr. Garner shook it for 20 minutes. <laughs> well, that's fine. I said, George, uh, why is it that I always get dizzy when I'm up in a plane? Well, Ray, it's the altitude that affects you. Well, then why is it I'm dizzy when I'm not in a plane? Maybe, maybe you were born that way. Maybe you're right, old man. I know I was born. Well, that's something. Because I remember the stork made seven trips with me. Seven trips? Yes, my parents kept rejecting me. <laughs> well, they shouldn't, they shouldn't have given up so easily in Cheerio. Oh, Cheerio. Cheerio. Oh, George, isn't that right, silly? Mm. You talk about one thing and he talks about something else. But you're all right, yes. huh? Yes. How about the speech? Well, I didn't make that until I got to Washington. Well, please, get to Washington. Coming to that. Mm. So the plane was going about 150 miles an hour, and we were flying upside down, and Just I said to Freddie... Wait a minute, wait a minute. You were flying upside down? Well, it was raining, and I didn't want to get my hat wet. <laughs> well, that's fine. A $10 hat and a $90,000 plane. So I said to Freddie, that's the pilot. I know, I know that's the so pilot. I said to him, I said, I said, stop at the world's fair for a second, and we landed in front of the Hall of Mirrors. You stopped in front of the Hall of Mirrors? Yes, my nose was shining. Oh, nuts. <laughs> so then we took off again and finally landed in Washington. And you said goodbye to Freddie? Yeah, but by that time we were engaged. Well, did he, did he give you a ring? No, he couldn't afford a ring, so he gave me the plane. <laughs> Well, wear it in good health. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And uh, when I got off the plane, there were a lot of photographers there. What happened? Well, I took their pictures. <laughs> what about the newspaper men? I interviewed them, too. Hmm. Did they ask you anything? Did they? They kept firing questions a mile a minute. Well, what do they want to know? Well, the Myrna Law has really got red hair. And uh, did you tell them that Henry Lamar has a 20-foot fence around the house? Yeah, and they couldn't get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of things I can't get over, too. Say, George, when Gracie goes to Washington and you're off the radio, don't worry. Who's worrying? Well, stop finding your nails and I'll tell you. They're not my nails. No. No. And they're not even his teeth. Oh, no, quiet. <laughs> I had to open my mouth. I say, George, uh, when Gracie's elected, you'll be the first gentleman of the land. 
Well, you don't know what that means to me. And, George, as Postmaster General, I'll be glad to give you a job. Thanks. Why, you're practically one of the family. I'll make you a letter carrier. A letter carrier? Yes, brother, when she's president, you'll be left holding the bag. <laughs> well, yeah, I can always get a job. I could do, uh, I could, I could be, well, I could try and, uh... Hey, Frank, what does a letter carrier pay? Oh, eighteen hundred a year and all the stamps you can eat. Hmm. <laughs> oh, goody, a thing like that, Frank, will we'll stick to a man's ribs. Say, Gracie, you went to Washington and met Mrs. Roosevelt and other important people. We're all dying to hear about it. Well, I'm coming to that. So after we left the airport, I got into an official car and rode down Pennsylvania Avenue. And I was greeted by a man in a beautiful white uniform. So? So I bought a good humor from him and you I You bought a good humor? <laughs> oh, yes, and I kept bowing and smiling to all the people. And the Republicans kept throwing confetti out of the window. Well, that's nice. And the Democrats kept throwing it back. Well, well, well. <laughs> They wanted to keep the streets clean. Yes. Oh, uh, George, a street clean the job pays 1300 a year. Will you no. go away? Yes, Will you go? You know, Gracie, I wish I were with you in Washington last week. Oh, so do I. Must have been thrilling. I'd have given anything to be there. Really? Oh, rather. I love good humor. <laughs> Gracie, did you ever arrive in Washington? Oh, I certainly did. I finally got to the Willard Hotel where the banquet was being held. And who do you think I met at the door? Who? The Secretary of the Interior. The secretary of the interior? Yes, and we had a couple of x-ray pictures taken together. Well, I hope you remember to smile. Well, I'm glad to hear <laughs> And here's Truman Bradley, who will show you how to beat a certain skin game. Take it through. Wash day is certainly hard on your hands. Harsh cleansers and hard water and raw wind when you're hanging things on the line certainly do make your skin look red and chapped. So for real comfort... Keep a bottle of Heinz Honey and Almond Cream near the laundry tubs. Oh, Truman, you don't have to sell me on Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. Remember, I'm Heinz Honey. Thank you, Gracie. Oh, I use it all the time on my strawberries. Come on, Gracie. <laughs> Smooth Heinz all over your hands, arms, and wrists before you start and the minute you finish washing. Right away, good creamy Heinz soothes your tender skin. Heinz is really the quick comfort lotion. Extra creamy, extra softening, and it contains two vitamins, A and D. Every creamy drop of Heinz helps ease away that rough, sandpapery look, coaxes back a smoother, more comfortable feeling to your hands. You can get Heinz Honey and Almond Cream at any toilet goods counter. The big dollar size is economical for family use, while the 10, 25, or 50 cent size is handy for your laundry shelf. Remember Heinz, H-I-N-D-S, and use it faithfully for softer, prettier hands. Now, Frank Parker. Thanks, Drew. Tonight I'm singing a song written by Harry Warren, a young chap who's made it a habit to write hits. Beautiful ballad entitled Summer Night. So jealous of the moon, jealous of a summer night in June. Why can they remain beside my darling while I must leave so soon? Summer night, you arrive. Days through. She tells you all her thoughts 
Frank, that was grand. Ah, uh, you're just saying that because you think I'm wonderful. <laughs> well, Frank, you are wonderful. Let's go steady. Oh, go away. <laughs> oh. Frank Yes, it's a little dreamboat. <laughs> you know, he'll be the first postmaster general with mail pouches under his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind this talk. When you got to Washington, did you make a speech, and what did you say? Yes, Gracie, get to the point, will you? Oh, the speech. Yes. Well, I was sitting on the dais in this big banquet hall, and um, when Mrs. Rosalk got through speaking... Gracie, did you meet a lot of people? Oh, everybody. And when she got Did you through... shake hands with them? Well, certainly. And when but she Could got... you tell which ones used Heinz Honey and Almond Cream? Oh, sure. All of them had lovely hands. Truman, I finally got Gracie where she's telling about her speech and you're interrupting her. Well, what are you getting excited about, George? How long can it take? I'm not talking about the dollar size. I'm only talking about the ten-cent bottle. Oh, well, that's different. <laughs> Gracie, what happened after Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt's speech? Well, they kept applauding and applauding and applauding, and there was nothing I could do but get up and talk. What? They were applauding for her, so you got up and spoke? Oh, sure. It was one of the biggest moments of my life. Hmm. Well, if I hadn't been there myself, I wouldn't have believed it. Imagine me in Washington when the most important women in the country were gathered. There they were, hanging on to every word I said, and me trying to hang on to my salad. Oh, oh what a night. I'll never forget it. Why, it was wonderful. Just picture it. This is exactly what took place. Wasn't Eleanor Roosevelt charming when she made her speech? She was simply wonderful and so down to earth. Look, Gracie Allen's getting up to make a speech. Uh, Madam Chairman, members of the Women's National Press Club, Mrs. Roosevelt, and other honored guests, I uh, hope you'll pardon me for reading my speech, but you see, I have to. Otherwise, how will I know when I'm through? Uh, anyway, um... Uh, well, I'll just call you girls because I hardly know you well enough to call you ladies. <laughs> so, girls, please don't expect me to tell you why I'll be the best president we ever had. There are too many obvious reasons why, and anyway, I'm too modest. <laughs> it wouldn't be good to talk about politics either. I'm afraid you women couldn't agree with my opinions any more than you can with your own. <laughs> and I certainly can't talk about the other candidates with so many of their wives here. <laughs> Um, and uh, there's no sense about talking about clothes because none of us can buy any till the campaign expenses are paid for. <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned, I can't even charge them till I find out whether I'm going to be elected or working for a living. <laughs> so I guess I'll just have to wind up talking about men and why they should be repealed. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't think I'm panning the men, but it's time we had a woman president. Millions of people tell me that. Well, maybe not millions, but thousands, or anyway, hundreds. At least my sister Bessie told me that. <laughs> so what's my opinion against millions of people? So, of course, I won't be the first woman president. I'll be the first woman who's president officially. That's all. <laughs> now, uh, we've been having unofficial women presidents ever since Martha Washington let George take all the credit. And in those days... There wasn't any Seattle to fly to, so she just ran a candy shop on the side. <laughs> um, but where was I? Oh, yes. It's time we girls get together and go places. And why shouldn't we do our backseat driving from the front seat? Why are men the only ones who can get suits with two pairs of slacks? Because it's a man's world, that's why. Oh, you're absolutely right. right. Why, just the other day in Hollywood, a Scotchman got in... He was in kilts and he got on a streetcar and an old lady in riding pants got up and gave him her seat. <laughs> That's what this man's world is doing to us. But on the other hand, women will admit men are a total loss. Why shouldn't we? We're just as broad-minded as men, no matter how stubborn and narrow they are. <laughs> Why, I I'll be the first to give a man credit when he's done something really big, no matter how small it is. <laughs> Even a man who gets to be president is surprised. His mother knows he'll be president before he's born, but he's never sure of it till he hears from Mr. Farley. <laughs> and, and to show you this is a man's world, just before dinner, Mrs. Burton Wheeler was telling me about her husband. On top of all his campaign worries, his chickens are a big problem. She says Mr. Wheeler's rooster has been lying awake nights trying to figure a way to produce better eggs and more of them. Then in the daytime, the rooster is so tired, the hens have to wake him up to crow about the eggs that they have laid. <laughs> but our day is coming, we hope. Women in all walks of life know what time it is, even if they're a little late in getting there. 
And you wives know what's going on, even if you can't prove it. <laughs> and, oh, it would be wonderful if men and women could play 50-50, but how can they? Half the time, the men think they're right. Now, why can't men and women be as friendly to each other as women are? Take two women. There, you've got the most beautiful friendship in the world. As soon as they find out, they both hate the same girlfriend. <laughs> and, and that friendship can't be broken till they find out they both like the same boyfriend. <laughs> but I guess it's our own fault. We spoil men. Uh, well, we shouldn't say men are just grown-up boys. It's bad for the men and very discouraging for the boys. <laughs> uh, on the other hand... How can you resist a man who does sweet, considerate little things for you? Like Mrs. Dewey told me about her husband. Only last month, while she was carrying his armchair over to the window, she dropped her handkerchief and he picked it up for her. <laughs> now, you know, it's things like that that make men worth living. So, in conclusion, girls, I can't actually promise that electing me will make men any better, but don't forget this. The most annoying thing about men is that they're so hard to catch. So, girls, with me in the White House, you'll at least know where to look for them. Thank you. <laughs> so, you see, George, that's what happened. Say, that was a good speech. How did they like it? How did they like it? Well, I've never seen waitresses more excited. Waitresses? What about those important women? Oh, they'd gone home. You mean you made, the spe you made the speech after they left? Well, you know me, George. I'm strictly an after-dinner speaker. Well, that's all I want. Right. out here on the telephone. Omaha's calling. You better hurry. It's a long distance. Oh, no, it isn't. The phone is right out here in the hall. I'll be right back. Did I hear correctly? Uh, was that a call from Omaha? Well, it might have been, George, but we thought we were playing Woods Could I Kiss Thy Hand, Oh Babe. Mm. <laughs> and I thought it was Dipsy Doodle without the dips. Oh, by the way, George, I may not be at rehearsal next Tuesday. You see, I'm taking swimming lessons. Swimming lessons? Yes. I'm going to see old boy. It'd be quite embarrassing for the Secretary of the Navy to be drowning all the time. 
Don't worry about that, Ray. The fish will always throw you back. Yes, and uh, Ray, while you're down there, don't forget to call up Blue Point, 9908. Who's that? Minnie the Mermaid. <laughs> and if a man answers, it's Johnny Weissmuller. You know, when Gracie's president goes out fishing, I'm going to supply her with a submarine. What's that, to keep the sun out of her eyes? No, that's so she can see whether the bait is still on the hook. I wonder who could be calling Gracie in Omaha. Me too, George. I'd give the 25-cent bottle to know. Well, I say, George, uh, can a person get vaccinated against seasickness? Yeah, but only on his father's side. Why, Ray, don't you know that seasickness is nothing to worry about? Well, you know what hiccups are. Yes, yeah, right. Well, it's the same thing with bumps. <laughs> Look, uh, let's drop the whole thing and not even talk about the Navy. You mean uh, goodbye, Mr. Ships? Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Secretary of the Navy uh, taking swimming. I'm back. Oh, Gracie, uh, who, who phoned you from Omaha? Oh, I was talking to Dan, and I said uh, to him... Dan? I, yes, and I said to who, him... Who's Dan? Dan Butler, mayor of Omaha. And I said to the him... The mayor of Omaha? Well, sure, every city has a mayor, you know. Oh, thanks. Uh, and they want me to hold my surprise party convention there in May. Do you mean to say the people from Omaha actually want you to hold a convention there? That's what Dan Butler said. Have the people gone out of their minds? Yes, but they'll be back in time for my convention. <laughs> and St. Clair Lewis says it can't happen here. Oh, it's going to be more fun. Union Pacific is going to have a special train for me. The mayor is having a special key to the city made for me. The businessmen are going to have torchlight parades for me. And the people will have street dances for me. Oh, there'll be about 300,000 businesses there to cheer for me. And my sister Bessie's going to be there. Bessie? Well, she's going to vote for me. Well, then you can't lose. Hello, Prez. Oh, hello, Bubbles. What's new since I've been gone? Oh, nothing much. But when I was crossing Vine Street the other day, I was hit by a truck. Hurt? Yes, but they'll be able to get it fixed. Well, that's a load off my mind. Uh, come in. Pardon me, is Miss Allen in? I'm Miss Allen. Oh, uh, Miss Allen, I met you in Washington last week. Oh, I remember you. Uh, Congressman Bloom. Uh, no, I... Oh, uh, Senator Hatch? No. Oh, well, I give up. Who are you? The good humor man. You forgot your chain. Oh, isn't he honest? And she's running for president. Say, Gracie, he's got pretty eyes. Say, if you think his eyes are pretty, you should taste his orange sherbet. Well, <laughs> tell me about the banquet, Gracie. What were the candidates' wives wearing? Well, I, I couldn't tell. They all had big signs in front of their dresses. Signs? Yes, yeah, saying, vote for my husband. And, Gracie, what did you wear? Well, it was very formal, so I wore that evening gown with the champagne stains. With the champagne stains? Yes. What was it, Mums, 1928? No, <laughs> Bessie, 1395. Uh, that's the beer barrel polka dot dress. Yes. yes. Oh, it must have been a thrill meeting and talking to those famous women at the banquet. Oh, it was. I had the nicest conversation with a congressman's wife, and she was telling me about her children, and I kept asking her to pass the song. Well, that was a smart piece of conversation. Yeah, well, I had to ask her six times. Even those congressmen's wives won't pass anything. <laughs> Bubbles, I've got a little news for you. Gracie is holding her surprise party convention in Omaha. I love Omaha. I lost three pounds there. Is that so? <laughs> is it definitely settled, Gracie, that we're going to Omaha? Oh, sure, Ray. Oh, then I'd better go home and start shaving. Shaving? The convention isn't for two months. Is it, is it going to take you that long to shave? Oh, maybe longer, George. There's no blade in my razor, you see. Oh. <laughs> well, you know that old saying, Ray, you can't get blade out of a turnip. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how do you like that, Frank? Anchor. Anchor? It stinks. It does, uh. Um. <laughs> Say, Gracie, on that trip to Omaha, do you mind taking my mother-in-law? Well, not at all, Truman. But thanks. My wife and I'd like to be alone for a while. Oh, we're not going to Omaha for two months, and everybody's getting ready. So is Laura. Who is Laura? My kangaroo. Oh, your kangaroo. The one you're using, uh, the, uh, the, uh, party, party emblem. emblem. Yes, yes, I thought that's so. I. Mm. Don't tell me a kangaroo is going to Omaha with you. Well, she's home right now packing her bag. She is, huh? Um, George wants me to do my campaign song again on account of he sings the chorus in it. Vote for Gracie. Vote for Gracie. She's the best little skipper in the land. Vote for Gracie. Vote for Gracie. Won't you please give this little girl a hand at me? Even big politicians don't know what to do. Gracie doesn't know either, but neither do you. So vote for Gracie to win the presidential race. A hundred million strong. That's right, you can't go wrong. Vote for Gracie. Keep voting all day long. Keep voting all day long. Keep voting all day long. Well, thanks. Would 
you like to hear Frank Parker sing my song? Oh, 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 Gracie. Oh, Figaro, Figaro. Oh, Gracie. It's awfully high, don't you know? <laughs> Time for Gracie. <laughs> to lead the boys of Mary Chasey. A hundred million strong. That's right, you can't go wrong. Vote oh, for Gracie. Keep voting all day long. All right, George, here's what you've been waiting for. Oh, vote for Gracie, so I can be by myself. Please vote for Gracie, so I'll be happy on the shelf. If she's elected, well, I'll be neglected. Uh-huh. And I can stay home and play solitaire and keep that silly dame out of my hair. Vote for Gracie, vote for Gracie, vote for Gracie, vote for Gracie. Vote for Gracie. The hands are the softest in the land. Vote for Gracie, vote for Gracie, vote for Gracie, vote for Gracie. Now let's have Truman proudly take the stand. Why don't you be like Gracie? Be fair to yourself. Keep Heinz Honey and Almond right there on your shelf. Goodbye to Chapman. Let's get together now and clap hands. And for a thrill and do, we'll tell you what to do. Vote for Gracie, and she'll shake hands with you. Vote for Gracie, yes, yes. Vote for Gracie, yes, yes. If the country's going, Gracie, so can you. Hey! Vote, 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 vote. Uncle Sam, let me paddle your canoe. I'm just like Joan of Arc, I hear destiny call. It's a call to the ballpark to throw out the ball. Well, vote for Gracie, to win the president's race. A hundred million strong, that's right, you can't go wrong. Vote for Gracie. Isn't this thrilling? Keep voting all day long. Would you like a copy of Gracie's campaign song, Vote for Gracie? Yes, I mean the actual sheet music, complete with lyrics and verses. Well, here's how you can get a copy of this song. Just write your name and address on the back of a Heinz Honey and Almond Cream Carton. The 25, 50 cent or dollar size carton, or two 10 cent size cartons, and mail it to Gracie Allen, Hollywood, California. That's all. Then in a few days, you'll receive your copy of Gracie's campaign song, Vote for Gracie. Oh, I almost forgot. This sheet music has a swell picture of Gracie on the cover, too, which shows how sweet and lovable Gracie really is in person. You can get Heinz Honey and Almond Cream at any toilet goods counter. You'll find every creamy drop of this quick comfort lotion helps ease away that rough sandpapery look, coaxes back a smoother, more comfortable feeling to your hands. So get a bottle of Heinz tonight and use it faithfully for softer, prettier hands. And remember, write your name and address on the back of the carton and send it to Gracie Allen, Hollywood, and you'll get your own copy of Gracie's great campaign song, Vote for Gracie. Thanks, Truman. Well, Gracie, say good night. Well, good night. And when I'm in the White House, you're all invited to come and have tea with me. But don't forget to bring your own lemon as I'm cutting down on the budget, you know. <laughs> good night. <laughs> have you tried the new hand cream in jars made by the makers of the famous Heinz Honey and Almond Cream? Just like the creamy Heinz, which you know so well, the new Heinz hand cream is a quick softener for rough hands. It's fragrant, too, and not a bit sticky. Makes hands lovely. Vote for Gracie. Vote for Gracie. She's the best little skipper in the land. Next Wednesday at this same time, over these same stations, George and Gracie and all the rest of us will be back again, don't forget. And don't forget, for Honeymoon Hands, it's Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Vote for Gracie. 